So today I'm very excited to give to you the first in hopefully many videos we have with some of our expert users on the Quantopian platform. Today I'm talking with Vedran Ruslan, who has been very successful in many of the challenges getting first prizes. And in this video, we will talk about his background and how he goes from conceiving an idea for a particular challenge up to testing that idea, iterating quickly on things, implementing that idea in an algorithm, and then submitting it to one of our challenges. So I think we just start with some general questions. So first of all, Vedran, uh, welcome, and thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Thank you, Thomas, for this opportunity. I am glad to be part of this video Fantastic. and to share my uh, workflow with community. <laughs> Great. So um, I'd be very curious to hear about your background in like how you got into finance and, and what angle you approach things from. So basically, uh, I studied uh, economics, uh, business, economic, uh, business economics in Zagreb in Croatia. And then there I basically got my master's degree in some, uh, let's say it's uh, managerial informatics. That was the direction uh, which I chose, like some merge between economics and let's say uh, uh, IT. After that, I basically worked uh, one year as trainee analyst and trader for prop firm for uh, American prop firm in Split, which is sitting in Croatia. And basically, uh, that I noticed there that I'm much more uh, interested in the quantitative side of uh, investing than the actual short-term trading, which is just like basically more like professional sport, reacting to stuff. There is not so much detailed analysis uh, and uh, like data sets they are not even mentioned, uh, back tests as, as well. And basically, slowly in my free time, I basically expanded my knowledge and uh, Basically, sometime after that, when I got my uh, current job as analyst, support analyst for NCR Corporation, uh, after my job, I basically uh, expanded my knowledge, as I said. Uh, uh, basically, on, uh, I learned basics of machine learning, Python, um, uh, uh, articles on Investopedia, like uh, unofficial like uh, pages like Zero Hedge, uh, all those. Uh, all the sources I could grab basically all over the internet. And then basically, I mean, I was aware of Quantopian even before that, but it basically wasn't in my scope. Like I thought that like, I don't do not have skills for that. I didn't even know how to program at that point, but step by step, step by step, slowly, basically I, I basically went through all those barriers and uh, eventually got to the point where I was able to create my first strategy, which didn't crash. And, and then, I mean, it was negative, like for many days and, and then like to get to around the, around the zero and slowly up into the positive. And then basically from that point, like I basically quickly advanced, let's say, and my, and basically my hunger for, 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 uh, this this knowledge in, in basically in quant finance even got even expanded even more and then I got really 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 interested into it. That's so, really interesting. So yeah, you you clearly come from more of an economics background, and then it seems like the coding was uh, second. So I would be curious how long have you been on the platform and how uh, much of for example the materials on the platform like the forums or the tutorials were helpful in, in getting you to uh, provide that other complement to your skill set? So uh, I think it was about the end of the 2017 and the beginning of 2018 when I basically start learning, started learning uh, articles and videos from Centex, for example. They were uh, very helpful. And in parallel, I, I basically learned Python and machine learning and programming uh, on uh, data camp platform. Mm -hmm. So that's basically two sources which I combined, both Quantopian and the data camp in parallel. So um, I mean, obviously, obviously all the finance and quant stuff was is concentrated here, and I just basically supplemented it with the general knowledge of the Python and machine learning and uh, 
as I said, step by step. Uh, obviously, I saw some templates for the other members in community, like which really helped me because it was hard for me to create uh, good working scripts out of nothing, uh, especially in the start. But and that really helped me, I must say. And uh, on them, I was able to ex further expand my current scripts and basically my factors and all of that. So it is definitely work on which was already done before me, on which I basically just expand and then add to it and and uh, in the future some other members will also create their their things and expand and so on just as we as community basically grow and strategies are getting more complex and better all the metrics are con metrics are constantly pushed higher and higher i would say uh would you agree with me yeah no absolutely i definitely observed as well that the quality in the foreign posts and even in the challenges it's very clear if you just look from the first challenge to the current insiders challenge how things have just very steadily improved um which is which is amazing to see um so then how do you usually go let's say um and i know that you're going to show us something about the process of uh something that you thought about submitting or have submitted to the estimates um challenge how would you even approach something like that like let's say okay there is now this challenge that we put out um yeah how does that look like just from forming ideas where do those ideas come from is it more from your uh understanding of how business and markets work or maybe some other ideas and how important is your creative thinking skills in these kind of things well i mean all those factors co come into play um so for example like uh, let, let's say some uh, important business metric uh, sales, for example. Um, it doesn't matter which factor, but basically in my mind, I rank, rank those factors by default in their like normal state. How would they, how, how on my list, how are they important for the company and for the investor? But then again, I'm aware then, then them, like the, those simple metrics like sales, uh, they are although by the by the uh in university when you learn like they are you just learn them by heart and they should be enough like if the sales are rising that basically you should invest in that company but i am aware that like that bear uh, metric is not enough for the profitable factor but i then i try to think like around that metric uh, how can i basically uh, pinpoint narrow it and basically uh, pull out as much as information I can from it to be basically uh, concise, precise. Uh, for example, like I would start to start to think like what was the inflation during that period? Like increased sales, they do not necessarily mean that the company is doing better if the inflation was was higher. And then I think about the, for example, uh, hidden inflation in some other like. Uh, Reports could show that the inflation is 2%, but I'm aware that it is higher than that. It is just like basically in some way covered, let's say it is in some other things like in, in pri house prices, health insurance, in some other places which are not uh, put uh, when the inflation is measured, basically it is not calculated. But maybe I will not use the inflation in my formula, but I am aware of it when I think about the sales, for example. And then you can combine it with the number of employees in the company, for example, put in perspective sales compared to the number of employees, or then maybe it is better metric to then pull out the net profit instead of the sales, and then compare it to the number of employees. And then uh, maybe that is not enough. Uh, that is maybe not, not even... Uh, precise enough because it compares all the corporations, I mean, companies in the entire country and not only the sectors, companies in the same sector. And like layer by layer, I basically filter filter the factor uh, and try to give my best that it's still, even as it is getting complicated, that it still makes general sense to me, especially like the main factors. If the complex algorithm has many factors, uh, I really try that the main factors have general sense to me because they, they will carry the majority of the signal uh, in any like trading regime. They will basically, they need to be as robust as possible uh, so I can explain them to myself and 
to the uh, to anybody to anybody else basically so i could have confidence in it myself because good back back test doesn't mean anything it's only future performance uh, is what matters in the end right so that is basically your overfitting protection is to make sure that there's a very sound economic hypothesis uh, that makes sense to you makes sense if you were to explain that to someone else and 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 that severely limits the space of potential things you would even consider well th th that is the main problem i mean the overfitting there are like many many uh, layers of protection there is like like general hypothesis to make sure that it is robust let's say it is one level of protection then even as i basically uh, like model the even finished factor like basically when i zero score when i like z score it or if i basically winsterize it or or, or I basically pay also attention to that and how it, it combines with the other factors as well. Um, I mean, it is like there are so many perspectives which needs to be basically controlled uh, to prevent overfitting. But then again, you still need to be loose enough uh, to be, I mean, you need to be rigorous. It's like, but not rigor, too rigorous. It's like really the balance like you, but that takes some practice i would say it takes like some experience for you to basically to get into that sweet spot so you can control yourself uh yeah because you like sub subconsciously you want to be to, especially in competition you want to win the prize and uh, you you will push your model and mod uh, modify it step by step and after some time it will become overfitted like uh, even if it if it, that wasn't your main intention, but if you like modify it a bit from ten different points, like the time and the position and uh, the, the factor and the weight, and slowly it will become overfitted. It's like unavoidable, unavoidable. So, yeah. but it can be controlled. It can be controlled. So interesting. Yeah. And then, um, say for one of the challenges that you submitted, and and uh, I think every all of them that you submitted you won um i think the estimates one for example i'd be curious how many factors to the extent that you want to talk about that were included in there and how much time um went into researching them and also actually how many of those I, factors that made it into the final algorithm um versus how many of those were tried but then discarded like yeah how many ideas do you discard and how many actually make it through well, I discarded many, like 70 to 80 uh, percent. In that algorithm, if I'm not mistaken, there is five or six factors. I'm, uh, I'm, I think five or six. I, I do not know by heart. But basically, there is one factor which is already known to you and the community, like that uh, short-term, fast-moving alpha, which uh, I think me some members all also found. found uh that definitely boosted the, the performance of the algorithm but uh besides that um yeah well uh, what can i see basically i uh, first i didn't discover that factor i discovered all the others so i had like uh three sharp ratio stable algorithm for all the days i mean into the future like from day one to day 14 so uh they were mostly like based uh, on i just discovered them using the process which i basically ex explained um it is not easy to like uh it, it, it's basically you have to figure it out i uh, i do not know how can i basically explain it to someone like easily because that is the point of the entire platform in so wave to basically figure out that factor but they they weren't simple i mean uh yeah, I mean, they compared multiple fields from the data sets uh, in many different ways. Uh, they were pre-processed. Uh, I mean, they were, let's say, z-scored, so they were they could be easily compared and added. Uh, neither one of them had like major influence over the other. None of them had any modified weight. All of them were like weight one multiplied by one <laughs> so uh, i avoided i think I, I really did good job with avoiding avoiding possible overfitting there 
And basically, a few day, days after that, I saw that some of the other members, like they already had that factor. And in the meantime, after a few days after I discovered those four factors, I did discover that really good factor of fast moving alpha. And I just basically combined it. And then algorithm really became really, really promising. And, I'll say, yeah. Uh, um, um, fantastic. So should we go to the tutorial section and see what you have prepared for us? So basically, this is what I chose basically for this uh, tutorial and workflow guide. Um, this is one of the data sets, uh, basically the, the bunch of data sets which were presented to us for the estimates challenge. And we can use them even uh, if we can combine them with the Sanders uh, data uh, data set for this current insiders challenge. Uh, so basically, the factor is really simple. What I cho chose is um, those two uh, fields. So periodic consensus EPS uh, up field, which is the number of estimates revised up uh, within fact, uh, fact set consensus window for specified slides and down basically uh, the number of estimates which, which were revised down uh, what is important for me when i construct uh, the strategy uh, is to really deeply understand what what the field actually represents so this field up represents the number of actual people analysts which Revise, so they were thinking that the stock will not go up. They they thought that it will maybe, maybe stay in place or go down. So it, uh, that number was re, was re, revised up. So either that that data was not in the data set, or the analysts thought something else, and that uh, their thoughts were revised. So basically, they changed their mind in some way, or basically the data ended up in in the field which was not present before. So it represents some kind of change, sudden change, uh, both up and down. And my uh, hypothesis is basically that the difference of those two fields should be predictive. So if more, uh, if there were more changes up than the changes down, uh, stock will go up, and vice versa. If there were uh, the number of the estimates which were revised down is higher than those which were revised up, the stock is basically stock should go down. Obviously, the higher the magnitude, the more it should go up, and more it should go down. So sense. now, when we have like the basic hypothesis and the idea, uh, I go to this uh, null records simple. Uh, Basically, uh, I Python notebook. Uh, I load the uh, fact estimates data sets, and I pick the first quarter for EPS uh, in the future. Uh, I mean the the predictions from the analysts, and from 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 those from that slice, I select uh, up latest up field and latest down field. Uh, I will use the period uh, for deciders challenge. I run the pay, uh, pipeline. And basically, my main point is to see how many records are present and how them are, are, are not filled. And I can conclude that uh, only 1.4% of the data is, is missing for all the uh, companies in the US stock universe, which is great. I do not like to fill them with arbitrary values like means and medians. Uh, that maybe could work if there is if, if this. I mean that can always work, but I, I I personally do not do it because especially when I create more complex factors, if if, if data is not there, I I like to leave it uh, in that state instead to basically generate it and then create the noise when I create one factor with the others, just just so it has the data. It, for me, it tends not to work as, uh, as I expect. So I just basically try to either filter it. Yeah, I just basically filter it. So it only includes the data, uh, the, the companies which have the data. Uh, and basically, uh, let's see the first five rows. We can see, like for the Apple, uh, actually, there were 38 revisions down and four revisions up. So uh 
according to my idea and hypothesis, uh, the stock should go in this time period, it should go down. And now basically when we saw uh, how many records are missing, that most of the records are, uh, are there, uh, almost 2 million of them. Uh, I move on, uh, I, I conclude that this data set is uh, this uh, yeah this data set is is fine for me and it should basically satisfy all our requirements to create a promising factor uh, after that uh, i move to the alpha factor analysis and basically i uh, construct custom factor from those two fields uh, up and down as you can see this little formula here uh, I just use basic weight. I, I don't like to basically manually modify the weights like machine learning does. It is really susceptible to the overfitting and I try to avoid it as much as possible. Um, but obviously there are cases when you can manually maybe change it if you know that one factor is much, much stronger than the other. Maybe cash flow sh should be more is more predicted, uh, predictive and important than the employee pensions, for example. Uh, but that is more based on your prior intuition and understanding that this should be more predictive. It's not really like, would you also go back and say, oh, this factor is just way better, so I'm going to upweight it versus this other one? Like after you see, well, the I mean, obviously, obviously, any factor can can have like the 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 alpha we are looking for. But I personally tried it and. It didn't work for me. I, I know that cash flow is more, uh, I mean, uh, at least historically, historically, it was much more better source of alpha, for sure. Right. I mean, maybe someone else uh, figured out how to basically use the employee pensions uh, are, as huge source of alpha. Uh, I didn't. Uh, so, uh, I iterate over the, uh, the this output and yeah, I mask it with the universe. Universe is the all the stocks in the uh, in the US. Uh, I filter out uh, all the no values and like infinite values, and basically I spit out first thirty uh, results. As so here, interestingly, so you're not using the QTU here. You're using like all the stocks. Well. This is well. I mean, oh yeah, all, you are using the the QTU. Okay, stocks, I, I mean, all the stocks in Quant in Quantopian. Um, right. Yeah, the Quantopian universe. Got it. That okay. was what I was referring to. Uh, and uh, we can see, for example, Apple. Uh, we have minus thirty four. This is clearly short signal for our for uh, in our factor and. When we plug it in in the algorithm, it will sell the apple and hope that it goes down. That is the, the basic idea. I mean, it is interesting that this this is, uh, I think this is like, yeah, 4th of January. Like there are many stocks in which have like high negative values. More of them are negative than those which have like high positive values. So I guess that was like a, a revision down day for some reason. Uh, okay. After that, I basically uh, launch the full tear sheet for this factor, and uh, we can see the quantiles, uh, the extremes minus 38 and plus 39. This is most likely Apple, as I noticed in the tear sheet before. Uh, annual alpha, uh, annual is alpha. Uh, okay, I see the the more the uh, returns in the next day contain more alpha than the uh, returns in the next three days and the next five days. Beta is also lower, which is great. Uh, as, as far as it, the closer the beta is to the zero, it should be better for our long short uh, strategy. Uh, after that, mean I see mean period wise returned by factor quantile. Okay, the first quantile is not perfect. I would like that this like blue blue bar is basically longer down, so uh, the the short returns are higher. But then uh, the one uh, the positive one uh, looks really promising. Uh, I mean, most of those I am aware of most of those uh, basically pictures, but uh, I skip most of them. I just want to check like uh, factor weighted long short portfolio uh, returns uh, for uh, one day returns. 
And this is basically how the returns will will, will look in the in the uh, like backtest itself. Like the, it will be quite similar, if not the same, because the algorithm will be set to trade every day. Uh, two hours after the open. I mean, for the challenge, it needs to be set up one or two hours before the close because strategies are evaluated uh, by the end of day holdings anyway. Um, and it's also a nice way, uh, like when, when you set a strategy to start trading before the close, generally it, uh, the, the performance of the strategy tends to basically go down as far as I have noticed when, when basically it is set to, to trade at the end. Uh, I guess there is some kind of uh, alpha sources which can be captured in the beginning of the trading day. Um, I know that volume is higher at the close as well, but it is not higher like one hour and two hours before the close. And and the open vo volume is generally also really, really high and relative volume also tends to be high for the stocks which are in the play. So um, setting like trading times one and two hours before the close is really uh, a nice way to also con control some kind of overfitting, in my opinion. Uh, all right, so fifth quantile returns look look really good, just as I like, like to see. But the first quantile returns, like the stocks which, which we short, it is not perfect for some reason, like second quantile, it, it generates better like short returns, but it still looks for like for the factor which is so simple. I mean, relatively simple. It is not so simple. You still need to basically find, figure out this idea, and compare those two values, and have the general like uh, hypothesis uh, which will motivate you to do it. But it is really nice to see that uh, this chart looks so promising. Uh, so there are basically charts for three and five days, but uh, I saw that the, there is more alpha concentrated in the one day uh, returns, and this is the period which we, which I will which I will focus on. And also, what is uh, interesting to, to to basically mention, uh, okay, p value zero, okay, that is fine, as long as it's below zero 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 five, right? And uh, where is that chart autocorrelation chart which I wanted to mention? Yeah, here. Uh, so these dips, uh, basically, I uh, I would say because new new values are introduced heavily, like each quarter, um, because that is the time. Uh, so because we can pull out the the earnings per share metrics for the entire year, half year, and all individual quarters, every quarter there will be much more data present. And this is what basically generates these dips in autocorrelation and also the dips in the actual turnover, because there will be many changes at, uh, at the start of that like quarter, on the change of the quarter, and the algorithm will have much more changed information on which to trade on. So basically, this is my conclusion uh, for, for this uh, sheet. Uh, I, I concluded that I will carry on with this factor. It basically satisfied my uh, basic requirements. And after that, uh, let's move to the uh, basically implementation. I will use the basic template, which was posted, I think, by you, Thomas, or or, or I think uh, who made it, Leo, or, or someone from the community. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think it was Leo. Basic start template. Um, so for competition, just change the uh, market to close instead of the open, but for this like uh, tutorial, I, I didn't change it, but just change this to close. And I just plugged in uh, my universe, uh, those two sl uh, fields, which are pulled out from DPS uh, quarterly slice uh, one quarter in the future. I mean, it is important to be aware that, that this didn't happen yet. These are just projections. And then you can play it with it to compare it to some other uh, values, some other slices, which makes sense to you. And also, you can compare it and combine it with some information which already happened and is and, and is known, like the uh, all, all, all that fundamentals data, which is already known. Uh, all right, self-factor, simple 
like uh, up revisions means down EPS revisions. Uh, so basically, uh, as far as the filtering goes, this is my general idea for this. Uh, since if you think about the sales, sales they will not start generally from the zero. Uh, but in my mind, uh, this is the number of the analysts which change their mind. So basically, the center of the distribution, let's say it starts from zero, and then uh, there is no need to basically manipulate the result that heavily, uh, even if it becomes the outlier. I want to keep that outlier that will just tell me that really many analysts changed their mind and revised that the EPS in the one quarter in the future should go up instead of what was currently projected. So um, I just apply basic Windsor eyes. I mean, I didn't even change it. I mean, so yeah, I just clip 1% from the bottom and 1% 1 from the from the top. Uh, and then I Z score it. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't even need to Z score it because there is only one factor here. But if I wanted to sum it or combine it with some other factors, it is smart to Z score it. It tends to work. Not always, but generally much better because all 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 the results are put on the same scale. scale. Uh, they are only the, uh, like there is only standard deviation in the play in the end. Let's say most of them are like between values positive and negative values of one, two, and three. So that works for me uh, really good. And basically, uh, yeah. So uh, we plug in objective target weights objective without any constraints no constraints at all. And so, uh, I mean, I, I already did the back test, so I don't, we don't have to waste the time, obviously. And to check that I will not present the like total failure of the factor. So the factor is positive. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, it performs like really good, like uh, without any overfitting or changes done or uh, like it is really rare that you can get uh, this kind of performance the first time you basically uh, construct the promising factor uh, it doesn't happen often ob obviously we can see that there is some like dip here yeah it takes some time there is quite some underwater time in the algorithm but eventually it recovers it immediately satisfies all the requirements by the quantopian sharp ratio 1.34 drawdown 3.9 percent sectors yeah I mean, no, no there, there is no single sector which is closed to the 20 percent cutoff style exposures well, so what it is? We have momentum. Yeah, the the, mo the momentum on the uh, on the upper boundary and the size. So this algorithm basically shows the the large stocks and buys the momentum stocks, which is interesting because the often the like the the big stocks they tend to have a lot of momentum. I mean, that's basically my observations observations so far because that they are often heavily uh, uh, basically beta uh, beta oriented and they often have higher beta than the market and and if, the, if there is a huge momentum in the market which it is obviously uh, right now yeah they tend to also go up together with the momentum uh, turnover 6.90 percent which is great um, yeah, that will enable the algorithm, and uh, the algorithm can be delayed by, by the few days or few hours, and basically all the all the capital can be deployed uh, without much slippage and like uh, unexpected costs. And basically, I'm really surprised like how this sim simple, relatively simple factor like basically checked all the boxes and you can submit it to the contest if you want. Uh, the next step, which which I basically check is, uh, I go 
So at this point, you, you, you basically submit the algorithm and you wait for the out of sample performance. Uh, I actually didn't do that. You can do it uh, yourself. I think that, it, if, if I'm not mistaken, when I was creating the other factors, it, it actually goes down in the end of this year or something like that, but it was holding OK for some time. Uh, what I want to see here in this tear sheet is I like to see like sharp ratio, comma ratio, all those ratios like Sortino, Omega to see are, are they holding up, like alpha, drawdown. Uh, I want, yeah, I, I quickly check the, the, the positions. Everything looks really fine to me. There are so many positions. It is so diversified, specific sharp ratio 187. That is really, really, it is really nice. Uh, consider it, as I said, uh, there was not so much manipulating done at all on, on this factor, which can be done. Uh, this drawdown is problematic, but then you basically uh, improve this factor and try to basically come over and get even better returns and figure out some other factor which does really good potentially in this time period. Uh, so, for example, if the... Uh, Earnings per change, earnings per change uh, revisions uh, are doing poorly. Maybe price revisions are doing good at this time period, for example, because they are not correlated in 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 some big way, and that for that is basically type of thinking which I apply when I see situations like this. And okay, we see the worst month minus one point three percent. Uh, all those days which were like which are used as benchmark when some important events happen to see the stability of our algorithm this one performed quite well okay so we so we see the number of holdings uh, i know there are like almost 2000 stocks which are traded in this algorithm which is amazing uh, leverage under control really like tight Tight, tightly around one. Um, turnover, those little spikes are basically uh, all those quarter quarters when new data flows in, we see the increased turnover, but it's re regular and quarterly, uh, which is basically really predictable. Turnover rates, distribution, all right, transaction times, uh, basically, yeah. These are just pictures which show, which we already saw in the few uh, slides be before, like how uh, is algorithm breaching any of the risk constraints and on which uh, style is algorithm re relying to capture longs and relying to capture shorts the most. But in this case, algorithm is pretty stable. It satisfies all the constraints. And I just moved to the last tear sheet, um, which is the one which we submit to the competition. Uh, you just plug in the backtest ID here, uh, execute it. It does its thing. And then it spits out all those six little pictures. And we can see that it has also almost two, two uh, like specific sharp ratio, which is for one single factor, it is really good in my opinion. Uh, there is a drop off on the day number two, but then it somewhat stabilizes and remains above one. Uh, total returns almost, yeah, like 11, around 11. Uh, but we, we see there is a drop in returns if we delay the deployment of this algorithm by one day. So the returns dropped by almost like 2%, which could be the issue, in my opinion. Like it is basically, um, you can put it in, it basically uh, take, takes off the profits from your algorithm together with the slippage and the transaction costs. So, um, in uh, the closer all those four lines are together, uh, the better. So that means that the algorithm can be traded at uh, any moment. And the, this type of algorithm will not lose 
potential profit if it's treated in with a delay. Uh, same for the specific returns. Uh, all the risks are below 0 0.4 and minus 0.4, so under uh, under the Quantopian requirements. Um, obviously, there is momentum which is like playing with the edge, but still it is under 0 0.4. Uh, generally, that was the issue before, but lately uh, I saw that, I mean, I also agree that if like, for example, five different algorithms are combined. Many of those risks are basically canceled off, and uh, um, we get more predictive algorithm. I mean, which is, but still, I mean, it should be, uh, it, it shouldn't be too constrained for sure. So, you, because if if you constrain your your algorithm too much to to basically satisfy the requirements for the competition. Uh, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you can actually improve the 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 uh, sharp ratio and the and the other metrics. But often you will you will lose the returns. I mean, the alpha, which could be really useful when combined with the other factors, which are not correlated in any way with the one you found. And the turnover. Uh, around five of those spikes are quarters uh, and the whole number of holding is uh, around 1850 or 60 and the last picture it is basically really important i would say for the quantopian uh, portfolio management because uh, when when the weights on which you bet are uh, so nicely split they can basically slice them and combine them with the other algorithm algorithms uh, really nicely and and create even better like combined algorithm so uh, for this type of challenges uh, it is really important that that basically the weights the long uh, the, uh, the quant the basically quantile of the weights on which you bet the most long and on which you bet the most short and the one uh, and all the others uh, to the middle are <clears throat> nicely splitted so so they can be further refined and basically used in the most optimal way and that is pretty much it for this for this quick example uh, uh, I hope that I still have internet connection because you're really quiet Thomas are you still here <laughs> yes uh... Uh, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I mean, really taking us from the inception to the uh, first, uh, just checking the data, the alpha lens tear sheet, then um, the algorithm, the portfolio tear sheet, then again, the alpha lens, the portfolio tear sheet of the result of that algorithm. And then this, uh, yeah, it's like the, probably the best explanation of the full workflow that we uh, were able to capture. So yeah, that, that was incredible. Um, yeah, so um, just to close out, I guess, um, just wondering if w what role you feel Quantopian has played in your um, development in this um, on this path. Huge, huge role, because this is uh, really something which I enjoy to do. Um, I mean, it is intellectually stimulating, and basically, it it um, it broadened my scope. I mean, I mean, initially, I thought like algorithm which has like which trades twenty stocks. That's it. I mean, I wasn't even aware that there are algorithms which trade with with the entire universe. I mean, they, uh, uh, like I learned so many things, and and basically. Uh, found out that there is completely the new way to, to think about the markets, which is not, uh, especially in the last few challenges, it is not even price and volume, volume depend, dependent. Right. I mean, we more do not even use those like data, which is mostly used when the algorithms are constructed and when the trading is done. Uh, so which is really amazing for me that some kind of data like number of these other transactions or can be predictive and that you can basically 
earn profit from it on such a large scale. Right. But then again, it is not easy, of course, you have to do it the right way. And and even if you do everything perfectly, and even if it makes sense to you, and even if all metrics are uh, in check, I mean, in the end, uh, it still doesn't mean that the algorithm will, will hold. So it is really like, uh, I think, tough thing to do it properly, and especially tough to do it consistently uh properly i mean that but yeah i uh i really want to thank thank uh, you guys in 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 uh, and, and girls in quantopian and all the community uh for 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 basically all the materials and and the time and the opportunity to basically to, to be part of this journey well what an incredible closing statement there's really no way to go from there uh, other than expressing my gratitude to taking the time um, to take me and everyone else who will watch this through your workflow, I have been extremely curious about uh, specifically what you do because I continue to be impressed by your submissions. So uh, yeah, this has been uh, really enlightening. Uh, thank you again so much. Yeah, likewise, it was a pleasure. Great.